Let me add, add this. I certainly do not feel very comfortable in working with Delamara. It's not a pleasant. I, I certainly would wish to have a case where I can show all this relation to organization <laughs> and have a plausible solution. And working with Delamara uh, usually is not coming to this point of feeling feeling free. It's more the point of of change of changing roads after ha after uh, having uh, endured also feelings of not feeling comfortable mm. but i think it's it's part of the the deal it's very important that we do not reshift this discomfort uh, to the client uh, because the client doesn't do that on purpose it's, and i do not take it personally it's a piece of hard work we have to do, and she has to work hard on it, and I have. And usually, when you work with the dilemma, you do not, on the content level, you do not have everything you need to understand the dilemma. And this is why I turned into the uh, uh, the moods, uh, the stages in the dilemma circle, what I will explain you now. So a dilemma is a challenge which cannot be solved due to the problem solution pattern that is delivered together with the dilemma. The, the question is stated in a framework which, uh, which has a logic that cannot lead to a satisfying solution to the question. It's the logic of the frame of reference. This is why we have to work with the frame of reference. Within this frame of reference, there are no, uh, no or only dissatisfying solutions within that logic. For example, as we stated right now, what we fantasize, we do not know whether it's really true, the problems that their colleagues, uh, their trainers get when she wants to discuss with them whether the broken works or not. They feel like it's endless, so, but they do not dare to say, get off of our back with that, because they feel that's inadequate, or get angry, or, or bothered. But they also do not want to try it really to solve it on a content level, because somehow they feel that's not the level on which the actual question can be uh, answer satisfying. And so they get to be stuck in dilemma dynamic. And in difference to Gregory Bateson's um, logical levels um, of double bind, uh, I just say very um, general, if whatever direction of solution you try to go within that frame of reference does not deliver a satisfying solution, somehow you, you feel it's not satisfying, take that serious, no matter how the logic of the dilemma is. Not, not to think you have, must have the content logic of the dilemma in order to work with dilemma time. Mm -hmm. Because I, I think it's a characteristic of dilemma time that you get aware of them when you're in the midst and you're not in the helicopter. <laughs> Dilemmas often remain obscure. Their logic is not described adequately in the end. And as an interesting thing, as long as the client is within the dilemma, the client has problems to say how the dilemma is constructed. And when the client is out of the, client, the dilemma, she is no longer interested in defining it. <laughs> so it's just relief, like a nightmare is gone. And no scientific interest really to find out what, how was the dilemma constructed really. So somehow we always have to work on an assumption basis and, and try to find our way. So dilemma arises from dynamics into dilemma circle. 
which I will explain you very soon, and simultaneously cause these dynamics. So if you are in a dilemma frame of reference, you go into specific uh, processes to try to solve it, and emotional reactions. So if you if, if a frame of reference is uh, uh, activated in a dilemma way, uh, your organism will organize in dilemma circle stages. Or the other way around, if somehow you uh, are touched by dilemma stages, then uh, they reconstruct dilemma um, descriptions of the world. So it's, it's a, uh, a mutual reality creating process. You don't know what is hen and what is egg. It's very important um, that you have the competency of despairing in time. This despairing is a word many people do not like because it's, it feels like existential, being lost, dangerous. But it's also a mild despair. When I I I call that despair or not being confident is a milder version of it. When I feel that when we work on the level we have already, it will not come out satisfying. Um, I don't know what to do else, so I have difficulties to dare to say I don't believe in that level. Um, and but to give up to try something without knowing what I could try is an active way to despair. So, for me, desperation is a feeling. All feelings, for me, have an indication of a social situation. Like anger has a indication that I have somewhere the belief system that I feel a discomfort somebody else is responsible for, and when I, my anger can help this person to change, then I will feel more comfortable. That's the logic of anger. And the logic of despair is it indicates you that somehow you are caught. With the, with the horizons you have right now, with the tools you have right now, sub subjectively, um, you are not confident that something good will come out. And this may be very slightly. It, it starts to grow for some time. You, you try this intervention, you try to change to this level, you try to address feelings, and somehow it's going nowhere, then you go back to try the content level, maybe it's this, and after a while you, you are in the position that whatever you try, you do not really believe that it will help something. And this is a clear indication that you are in a dilemma uh, situation, and then it's important that you give up, because uh, what we will see um, later, giving up uh, is the first one of the first steps uh, not to go on to perpetuate the dilemma circle. But it's not easy to give up when you don't know the options. And giving up, although you don't know the options, uh, usually causes reactions of despair. Mm. You know? And it's important. To, to deal with this despair, not try to, to avoid it, because when you avoid it, you are a model for the other person also to avoid it. Mm. I'm thinking of um, Marks and Spencers years ago, um, when they tried to branch out of England and go into Europe, mm -hmm. um, and I mean, they, I mean, they nearly went bankrupt, I mean, you know, and so they've pulled everything back in again, mm -hmm. completely rebranded, mm -hmm. and are relatively successful, but they can't, you know, they did get to that point. Um, too late? It, it wasn't oh, too very late. late, it was okay, mm -hmm. but um, they, they can't function outside of the UK. Mm -hmm. But they tried, mm -hmm. and it really bit them on the arse. <laughs> and they probably yeah. would have made it when when they would have be, been have more competence in feeling when 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 they are on the way to solve problems the ways that do not function. Why they only accept that maybe it's not working that way. Well, their their um, their marketing 
well, their customer base isn't, is it, it's very English, it's a very English product. Mm -hmm. um, and the only reason I remember it is because my father at the time was um, head of the Chamber of Commerce in Paris, mm -hmm. and it was about that same time, so he was, he was part, he wasn't involved, but he mm -hmm. had contact with it, and, um, and it was a really difficult time for them, and they came back mm -hmm. um, over to Finland, so... So they gave up in your support? They had to. Yeah. They had to. Okay. They lost sight of their home market as well, they didn't Yeah, they, they did. Time. I mean, they, it, it caused a, an effect here, and, mm. and I'm just thinking of when you were, the way you were describing the word despair. Mm. Yeah. It really mm. felt like that at the time. Yeah. Um, but they can, they've completely, they can, you know, the organisation that is there now is not the organisation that was there in the 80s. Yeah, they so lost the market. It's mm. You know, it's completely. Totally different. Their whole ethos has changed. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the giving up. Yes. Is it the giving up the idea, the thought, the behaviour, the pattern? Is it whatever is there? It's an attitude. You, you must be ready to, to let go everything. Yeah. You try to. You you are uh, seduced to hold on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I say more. Yeah, it's really that that comment though is really important. I think yeah. Yeah. the yeah. the ability the ability to let go of everything. And there's something really freeing about that once it's happened. Mm -hmm. This because it, it, there's something about the dilemma and the despair within that dilemma. Mm -hmm. It's really confining, really restraining. Yes. And having enough about you to be able to let go of everything mm -hmm. suddenly opens up all sorts of opportunities. Yeah. And uh, your client can do it easier when you build up a second line of solidarity yeah. that is not touched by giving up. Yes, mm. so they have that strength there. I'm not mm. giving up on myself. I'm, I'm mm. letting go of all ties to this. Yeah. Yeah. In it, um, the process leads into, I was thinking, decision-making. Because I was thinking that the time before, sometimes you have to make a big decision, is a really difficult time. You know, it's often a dilemma. I, I don't know whether to do this or I don't know whether to do that. No, that's not a dilemma. That's just uh, um, uh, ambiguity. Ah. A dilemma is if I do this, it's not satisfying, and if I do that, it's not satisfying. Just if I do this, it has a price, and if I do this, it has a price. But when I pay the price, it's okay. Then it's not a dilemma. That's ambiguity. Mm. The problem is with dilemma are when you introduce the notion of dilemma, people make up from every discomfort and every dis. Uh, um, Decide decision situation a dilemma, but it's only some are dilemma now. And you can learn to feel which ones they are by social diagnosis. Mm -hmm. So, I told you because the problem is when you are in the midst of the dilemma, you very often do you know not know how it is constructed. But what you can diagnose very well are the emotional states within dilemma. And these are the four positions in the dilemma circle. So you change diagnosis from content to social diagnosis uh, in process. And when I felt that, when, when I, um, I do not feel we will get anywhere uh, when we try in the contracted way, uh, and I'm not sure whether we can find an, a different way, then I, I, I found myself uh, being in the struggling, or a tent, uh, tent to struggle, and then uh, I, I was struggling for some time, you do not realize it at once, but after some uh, trials, uh, you come to the conclusion, uh, it's not because you didn't find the right option, it's because you are on a not solution path. And then uh, I, I have the notion of struggling for that. 
people have a frame of a dilemma frame of reference for the situation uh, are not in dilemma dynamics as long as this topic is not activated. With Sandra, we, up to now, there was no flare of dilemma. So it's a specific error. And when they avoid this error in the reality, then they might not have uh, have to be, have a dilemma problem. But if there is a it's activated from outside or um, it's an important uh, um, string in life that cannot be neglected for a long time. As, at that time, when you react, uh, reactivate the topic, you reactivate activates the dilemma uh, frame of reference. So it's not always there. It's often connected with specific topics, man-woman relationship, Perfectionism, but it's not, it's not only, it's, it's not just to be perfect trauma, it's be perfect trauma in a frame of reference of dilemma. Yeah, and then you are struggling, and I defined it, the, the best definition is acting without confidence. When you, when you ask yourself and you ask your client, and both are honest. Whether they have hope, they say no. And if you don't have hope, don't try to, to work. Yeah. Yeah. Take it serious that you don't have hope. Mm -hmm. Except it's a record of yours. Uh, you need to be clarified that if you don't have hope, that's most probably a diagnostic signal. And when you struggle, you usually get exhausted after some time, but then you go, uh, you have phases of resigning in between. This means uh, you do not struggle, but you do not really leave the frame of reference and you do not recover. You, you drink, you do something else, to have a distraction. But when you come back, the problem and your attitude to the problem basically is still the same. So these are only two versions of a kind of depress depressive way to deal with a not solvable problem. One is active depression and the other is passive depression. And for a long time I thought the only way out is uh, accepting despair. Even if you are not sure whether it's a good despair, a competent despair, uh, you should risk to despair. Mm. <coughs> uh, because if, if it's not necessary to despair, then afterwards you will notice. If you not, do not dare to despair, you will not find out whether it's uh, uh, okay or not. So that's the, um, it's the sort of cliche, isn't it, of um, until you reach the point of absolute despair, mm. You won't find a way out. There's a need to hit the bottom. Yeah, it's a yeah, and it's also a cliche. Yeah, it's but also it's true challenge. sometimes. Yeah. and but it's not true all the time. Exactly. And my colleagues discussed with me and, and said, "Oh, this sounds like a kind of masochistic yeah. uh, way of first you have to go mm -hmm. <laughs> deep down, and then you can uh, be resolved." Mm -hmm. uh, that's true, but sometimes it's important uh, to, to help somebody really to give up. She tried to escape, not not to give up, but to escape on another level and struggling again. And it's important it's important not to go with that. Just say it's I, and it's only a, a an intuitive diagnostic that also all the arguments may be right, that we could try it on this level. If, if that, this doesn't change my confidence, then I refuse it. Uh, you know. 
And uh, so sometimes, uh, and that sounds strange for many people, sometimes uh, the service a consultant is giving to a client is helping him to uh, despair, to be desperate, and to confront always, to switch to another level. And she had not only the uh, switch of level, but also the redefinition transactions and the fo focus change that she offered me uh, might have been moves uh, not to meet the desperation. I, I believe when she is not in a dilemma uh, dynamic, she does not redefine so often. So it has a function to avoid despair. It has a function to avoid giving up. And it's important that I do not di diagnose this person is not able to keep track in frame of references. I have a question. Uh, I don't know whether it's, it's linked to this and how, how you'd um, 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 see it. I had a, a, a client and uh, um, we came to a situation where I, I had to tell, tell the client that uh, I can't help her. I, there's nothing I can do about the, yeah. the issue because it just turned him around. And um, that's the moment when the client introduced the another issue on, yeah. on the table. And, and and then it started to um, to open up in a, in, a, in, a, in a different way. But it was the moment when I said, well, I can't do anything for you. And was it a valid issue? Sorry? Was it a valid issue? Uh, the, the second one was. The, the first okay. one, we, which was, um, um, I don't know where it came from, and, and I took it for its face value, and, and mm -hmm. we started working with that. And then it just, it was like, like a full swoop, whole swoop in between us, and, and, it, and it didn't, end up and and until the moment when I said, well, I'm sorry, but this is something I, I can't yeah. can't help you out of anything. And that's the moment when sh she brought the the second issue, which apparently was much more important. Or, or, I'm or not sure it? whether it was more important. I, I it was an essential one, as yeah. you say, and it worked. But maybe the person gave up to offer your, uh, her or his dilemma frame of references. Yeah. Uh, and just went into avoidance mm. and finding an, a, another topic that mm -hmm. could be dealt with in this kind of consultation. Mm. I'm not saying that's the case, but that's an option to think of in terms of dilemma. Could it? Well, now I'm thinking that could it be because I said that this is this is finished. I I can't continue with this. That she wanted to continue the the relationship yes. and bring them. Yes. Second, second issue. Yes, and might be uh, you find intuitively a way to work, uh, uh, build up a good working relationship mm -hmm. on the second issue, mm -hmm. and if the first one was somehow essential, she will come back with it mm -hmm. because she wants a solution for that too in the relationship. This can go fine, but it it's also can. It might be important to very clearly tell me, I will not abandon you, mm. but I, I abandon you a way to try to solve a problem. But sometimes people just act a bit confused, mm. and if you say, no, I cannot do something on that, they take more responsibility. Maybe there was no dilemma. So sometimes it's a love service, a loving service you can do to lock all escape hatches mm -hmm. and s spot somebody in the point of desperation. But that's a risky procedure. You know? so if you can avoid it, it's better. But if you not can avoid it, it might be worse to try it. I was just sitting here thinking about, um, I had, um, I've had, I've had a few like this, but I had one contract in particular years ago that, um, I got asked to work on, um, as a project. And I think the total time was probably about four times. 
And over a period of about three years, they kept coming back to me and saying, yeah, 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 we're going to do it, we're going to do it, we're going to do it. And I think the last time I was just like, yeah, no, it's not going to I'm not really not interested. And they said, yes, no, we're definitely going to do it. So I was like, okay then, right. I thought, and I was quite passive about it. They were like, yeah, come down, meet the customer and all the rest of it. And I went down there. And just as some of our teams were starting to get to that point, the customer then got honest. And they'd been withholding so much information mm -hmm. that actually, in effect, we couldn't have done the project, mm -hmm. ever. Um, but that, that despair, and I don't know what it was that you just said that just reminded me of that, of that mm -hmm. particular customer, mm -hmm. where the despair was there, but it was there because people weren't being honest about what the situation was. Mm -hmm. And once they'd actually expressed what was really happening mm -hmm. because of their security or whatever, mm -hmm. it was like it was a non-starter. Yeah, I said you have, you have together found a better stance to say yeah. with the situation. Yeah, we, can, we can so, just solution is not or, possible. Yeah, or pass it over to someone who is able to deal with it. Yeah. But they'd come to the wrong people mm -hmm. to, to fix to sort out what they wanted. Mm -hmm. But, they, I mean, although it's a dilemma and it got to that point, it, was, it wasn't actually a problem. It was just a withholding of, of, of the truth. Hmm. And um, so, yeah, I was just, I was just kind of, yeah. So, helpful attitudes. I guess I said it already. Be aware of struggling and loss of confidence. Give up struggling and gain distance. So helicopter is good. Let's go on a helicopter. Mm -hmm. Or explain to the other person, my situation is the following. I want to help you. But as far as I understood now, when I try to do this, uh, we uh, find a dead end. When I try to do this, we find a dead end. And I would, do not want to do it to me or to you that we try uh, to work when we only see dead ends, as long we have not different perspectives, it doesn't make sense uh, to struggle. So, the earlier you handle despair, uh, the more you have uh, Spielraum. Oh. Space to react. Yeah, uh, space to react. Yeah. It's clear when you... Yeah, then it's not, not easy to confront. Dilemma town. And you have to do it in a qualified way. So this, uh, and for me, qualified has a lot to do with uh, staying in good contact with the human being and describing as good as possible uh, how you just give up and why it makes sense to give up at that time. Because it's important that you are a role model for the other person. When the other person is successful without wanting to do that, to invite you into a dilemma frame of reference, why should this person be confident that you could help her with dilemma problems? But in order to avoid desperation, or if she's even she gives up, as long as they do not listen very carefully, when she, when she gives up, uh, then I'm lost because I hope she can help me. So it's very important to give very clear information. I give up because it's not competent to try at this point. But as soon as we have new orientations, what we can do, we certainly do something. There's a, a nice poem from Bert Brecht. I translated it, it's only one line of that poem. If I accept vanity in time, I recover. And if I do not accept vanity, then I'm the dilemma circle. It's, it's only for some time a pause, and I, I go back, and I'm not recovered. What do you mean, or what does he mean by vanity? Pardon? What do you mean by vanity? Vanity... Uh, in German is gehe ich in die Lehre, gehe ich bei Zeiten in die Lehre, komme ich aus der Lehre voll. How do you say? Really <laughs> <laughs> you understand it? Oh. <laughs> 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 
if I if I go if I dare to let my fall myself into the emptiness in time, then I come back from the emptiness. Yes. Okay. When I try uh, to be frank with vanity, with giving up, then my strength is coming back. I'm not sure if vanity is the right word. Vanity? No, vanity is not the right word. It's not the right word? When it is idle kind? It's Mm. liquid, vanish. To remove Mm. something. Yeah? Pride. It's it's losing. If I lose my pride. It's grooming. No, no, no. no, Vanity is uh, just giving up. Giving cancer. No, that's not vanity. Vanity is when you spend too much time looking in the mirror. Yeah. Too, it's too much oh, time admiring yourself. Yeah, it's a, in, in, yeah. yeah, there are two meanings of vanity. The other meaning is it's in vain. Ah. Ah. In vain. Yeah. 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 Conceit. Maybe. Yeah. If I. But it, yeah. maybe we do not have the right word, but we have the meaning now. In vain, it's almost fruitless, isn't it? Fruitless. Yeah, fruitless. Yeah. Fruitless. Yeah. Good. <laughs> so seek support. Fruitless pursuit. Seek support for yourself, yeah. but not for struggling. Mm. And that's what I did. I offered support for her, but not for struggling yes. uh, within mm. a dilemma frame of reference. And if possible, reapproach the challenges from different mood and frame of references. I've been thinking about impasse mm-hmm. and petrogliary stuff around interpersonal impasse. Mm-hmm. And if I, I, I don't remember it exactly, but he said something around you don't necessarily have to get out of an impasse in a, in a therapeutic relationship. It's about being in it and introducing a third into it. For example. Right. For example. This just means ch- changing frame of reference yes. or power fields. Yeah, so it's all about impasses and opportunity. It's 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 not something to get out of. It's something to be in in relationship and right. see what emerges through it, if you like. And this isn't exactly the same thing. No, is but it? it's quite it's, similar. It's, yeah. it's not struggling, not trying to get out when you're in it, but to find to, to bring in new elements that change the frame of reference and the dynamics. So there is something. And somehow finding out without knowing where you have been in. Yeah. Shall I speak to vanity from the dictionary? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's really interesting because the first definition is pride. Um, so that, that everyday mm. thing. But there is a second meaning, which is the quality of being pointless or futile. Oh, mm. That's just not something that is used as well uh, in everyday speak. Pointless. So the mm-hmm. phrase they use for everyday speak is the vanity of human wishes. And I was thinking that book by Tom Wolfe about a decade ago called The Vanity of the Bonfires. Futility. Yeah. But it's not it's not Futility, a, yes. It's not a way that we true. use it in everyday speech. Which you're w- absolutely correct, of course. Mm. You've updated <laughs> our you you've taught our English language. I, I, <laughs> I even could teach them English. <laughs> one thing they won't be expecting to hear when you get back. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Have it on tape. Whenever Wonderful. <laughs> so, and then I had a discussion with my colleague, Professor uh, Varga von Kiebet, who was a uh, logic professor in Munich. And we had hard discussions on uh, is it necessary to reach a point of despair? And uh, he stimulated me not to only to look for this exit door, but saying at each phase of the dilemma circle, uh, you can uh, fall down on the dilemma way to struggle, but you also can climb up in a good way to struggle. Mm. And that's the same with denying, and that's the same 
uh, with uh, giving up. And so I said, okay, we have, we can also postulate a meaning circle. And what denial is in the dilemma circle is just unquestioned life in the meaning circle. And it's okay if you have new complex problems, you have not solution patterns for it. And um, it's also okay to fight and to strain. Not every fight is a struggle. But sometimes it might turn into a struggle because you have adopted ideas which will not help you out. But maybe if you fight with them, somehow you find new elements and that's, it turns again into a struggle. Uh, that is okay. It's uh, not, not in a struggle, into a fighting. It's okay to fight. It doesn't have to be easy and you don't have to be conf confident in a superficial way. Sometimes you are not sure whether it will turn out. But it feels different when you fight in the belief it can be done. It's diff for me, it feels different than if you know I fight, but it's fruitless. Mm. And when you stop fighting, uh, when you're in a good process, you really recreate. When you come back, you see are new elements to it and new power. Mm. And you don't have to despair. Uh, you just can't let go. If something is done, you just let go, and that's okay. So, uh, oh, no. <laughs> and then I, I, I constructed <laughs> this, this picture, and we have the dilemma circle down there, and the meaning circle down there, and the idea is that at in each state of the dilemma or the meaning circle, you can find okay ways mm. in that dynamics and you can fall back into not okay ways of that. So you have much more options to work with. You don't have to go over the desperation. Mm. But you should be ready to, de so to encounter the desperation. If you avoid desperation, then desperation is important. When you be ready to accept desperation, then you have much more options to uh, get out of the dilemma circle. And another question buzzed me, how comes that people leave the dilemma circles uh, since years, maybe centuries, without knowing my concept? <laughs> <laughs> and how come... <laughs> yes. And how come uh, psychotherapists and consultants uh, somehow help people out of dilemmas without knowing my concept. Yeah, struggled. <laughs> <laughs> and I came to the uh, conclusion that uh, if you are creative and bring in new elements, and if you find ways to help people to get back to their essentials, then they find you find a way out of dilemma frame of reference mm -hmm. by yourself without having a concept for it. So this is why many approaches help to resolve dilemma without having a concept of dilemma. But I also know that many approaches uh, try to solve dilemma uh, and get lost in the dilemma and struggle and fight. And too often I've experienced that the consultant uh, shifts all the discomfort of not knowing how to work with dilemmata in the end to the client. Yeah. And the client is, is a victim then. And this is unethical. There's something in how you work that models being okay with not okayness. Yes. Mm. So, for me, despair in TA terms is I'm not okay and no one else is either. Perhaps, or there's a touch of that in it. No, I would not agree with it because mm -hmm. uh, 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 at the same time, when I tell her, uh, you are okay, but your patterns, I cannot go with your patterns. I can look yeah. at myself at the same time. Uh, I do not know any solution right now, but this doesn't mean I'm not okay. It that, feels uncomfortable. But that's what I'm saying, is yeah. that it's possible to be okay about not being okay, or okay mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. not okayness. Yeah. No, it, it's being okay about being desperate. 
discomfort. Otherwise, you would. Uh, the frame of reference is when uh, when I'm desperate, uh, okayness is gone, and it's important that okayness goes can go along with being so desperate. So what you're doing is you're challenging the frame of reference that being in a dilemma is not okay. In fact, it could right. be okay. No, that's, that's what I mean. Yeah. Right. That's, yeah. Yeah. that's what I hear you say. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you modelled that in, in that exchange because because of your tone of voice, the way you sat, the, yeah. the space you left, the fact there was no need to get anywhere, mm -hmm. all right. of that kind of thing. Right. Right. And I can see that that would be a container. Right, right, right. And um, to say it in, in position terms, I try not to have the dilemma between us. <laughs> I try to help to put the dilemma there and sit beside the client and let's build up a study group in the dilemma town. Mm -hmm. Certainly you also, as a person who is suffering from it, and I'm suffering a bit with you, but that's not our problem. Our problem is that we should study the dilemma. Is this the list of this is this the He told me when I get to the last charts and I stop the recording. So, there's one left. Uh, I already mentioned it, Eric Byrne. Uh, also, he had some kind of a life that when you listen to Fanita and others, <coughs> seemed to be a struggle for being fulfilled. And he, he was somehow maybe not so much successful in that. But obviously he had a sense of existential desperation. And he said in his uh, time structuring theory that people structure time uh, as a way to um, do something in their life, not to fall into emptiness and to avoid uh, fear of death, waiting for rigor mortis, like he said. And so I, I, this was forgotten in TA. And I think whatever you can do to help people to have a meaningful life, also in their professional life and in their organizational life, is the best therapy against games and fruitless pastimes and script behavior. And this is why I'm much more interested in building up positive cultures instead of curing problematic cultures, because that's an endless job. And Fanita remembered a poem um, uh, Byrne loved, and I found it in the internet. It's from Wachel Lindsay. You, you, uh, I guess you can read it better, but I read it to you loud. As uh, this somehow reflects maybe a soul message from Eric Byrne. Right? Let not young souls be smothered out before they do quaint deeds and fully flaunt their bride. It is the world's one crime, its babes grow dull. Its poor are ox-like, limp and lean night. Not that they starve, but starve so dreamlessly. Not that they sow, but that they seldom reap. Not that they serve, but have, have no gods to serve. Not that they die, but that they die like sheep. Hmm. So some, somehow TA could be an approach to invitation to a meaningful life. 